Hi everyone, in this episode I have again my friend Alyssa Meredith and she's a poor artist, abstract artist, and she's also a Pinterest marketer. And today we have a fun episode. I thought it would be fun for us to bring five tools that we like and discuss about it. Well, we end up stretching the five tools a little bit, basically me, but we have a lot of fun and I hope you can learn about some new tools and uh, I hope you enjoy. Welcome to the Artistically You podcast, where mixed media art is a place for all. Here, we are going to talk about art as a mindful practice, connect with our creativity, and embrace curiosity. This is your host, mixed media artist, Jana Oliveira. All right, Alisa, so good to have you back here, and it's going to be fun. Oh, thank you for having me back. I'm excited. I was up in my studio looking around this morning for things to talk about today. <laughs> yes, and it's going to be fun. But be- before we start it, something exciting is, um, you know, Alisa, if you don't uh, check her last episode, we have an episode with her all about uh, Dutch poor fluid art because that's uh, her technique that she uses. And... Um, she decided to open a shop, which is exciting, <laughs> and it's called Deep Blue Fluid Art, correct? Oh, yes, right. And I want to show, if you're not familiar, if you're watching this on YouTube, and if you're listening to this, you can later hop on YouTube to kind of check uh, the products that we are showing. But of course, I'm going to put all the lists <laughs> of the products. But I want to show here a little bit of some of the art that she does, which is amazing. Oh, thank you. And this one, because I love blue. So good. So Well, you know, this that pink one you showed, that's on my shirt. Yeah, that I'm right exciting. Now. <laughs> it looks I had to so order good in a shirt. Oh my Thank gosh. You. And I also you have sure they're okay. you have a website, alisameredith.com. And That's over there, what kind of things you write there on your website? A lot about Pinterest, um, but also because I opened that store and that really was a, a marketing experiment. Mm-hmm. You know, if I sell something, great. I hope I can pay for the Shopify cost. But mostly it was, I wanted to see how this works. I wanted to get the mm-hmm. Pinterest connection. The I connection. wanted to become a verified merchant. Which was which I did within just a couple of days. So, just kind wow. of sharing how that's going. Yeah, and I want to do a disclaimer. Baby, gonna hear some noise. We have real life stuff going on. She has some people on her lawn. I have people taking care of my sprinklers, and noise maybe will be here. But today, as uh, probably you saw on the topic of the podcast, we're gonna talk about tools. So I thought it was fun to invite Alisa because she does a different kind of art. So she has a set of products, but I believe some of the things you're gonna show, it works with acrylic paint in general, right? And I decided to show a little bit of everything. <laughs> um, and to keep the time frame, we're gonna show about four or five things. Um, And then we're going to talk about it and show. So I would recommend on this episode, you hop later to my YouTube and you can see the products or see the things that we are going to be showing. So, of course, you have the link. But I think, if you know, if you see the product, then, you know, you're buying the the same thing that we are talking about. And um, before we get it started, I wanted to talk just a little bit about security and safety. Uh, because in my case, I work with alcohol wings and oils and even acrylics, right? So I think it's important for you to have on your stash always gloves. It's important. I never deal with acrylic paints without um, gloves. And uh, also my handy dandy. And this is a must if you're going to do alcohol ink, my respirator. And this oh, one yeah. I got on Amazon. You can find on Amazon, of course, on um, Home Depot, Lowe's, any construction store, whatever you live is going to have respirators. It's important. Many people complain about headaches when dealing with alcohol ink, and it's because you're not using masks. But masks that really completely erase the smell and you don't keep smelling the alcohol especially when you do with alcohol ink you're not just dealing with alcohol ink but i use alcohol pure alcohol 
and all the things smell a lot, especially when you're there on the top of your art. And it's important also to have good ventilation. I just bought an extra fan. I have a top fan, a side fan. And of course you can open. Um, I hear I do have a door that I could open, but we are in Florida and a lot of bugs would come in. <laughs> yeah, it's hot. Yeah, it's hot. So just to put this out there to the security of some, you know, it's important. Let's remind uh, the acrylic paint, it has chemicals and it goes to your skin. Uh, otherwise, if you're dealing with acrylic paint that is on target, that says it's for kids, it's safe for kids. But if you're dealing with artist brands like Golden, you should wear gloves. You should not do none of this thing of putting your hands and painting on the canvas is no, no, no. Let's not do that, okay? We don't wanna have cancer down the road because of our art. So now that is out of the way. Alisa, what do you have for us first? The first thing I have is this weird looking apparatus. Oh. And if you're just listening, it is a tube, uh, a, like a rubber tube. tube. Is that a rubber? Yeah, I guess it's rubbery. And on the ends, it has these plastic mouthpieces yeah. slash nozzles. So what I use this for is a uh, Dutch pour where you do a lot of blowing. So you uh -huh. usually do the first pass with a hair dryer, but then to kind of, um, to tweak it a little bit, you use, uh -huh. a, use a straw or you use, just use your mouth. But that is really hard when you have a large canvas and you end up getting your shirt Why? in your paint. I do that all the time. Um, so this you can reach, you can like, oh my God. rather than having to move the canvas, like turn the direction, you can, this you is can, fantastic. Uh, yeah, you can like. What's do it the name of this angles. thing? This thing is called the Puffy Two Thousand, which I think is the funniest, <laughs> silliest name. But it is. <laughs> that's what it's called, and uh, I think they like they three D print these little things. Oh wow! Uh, so anyway, as you can see, I have used it quite a bit. It's covered yeah. in paint. But, but where did you buy it? Is it online? Yeah, if you just Google Puffy Two Thousand, you'll. <laughs> You'll wow i'm gonna put yeah. the link on the notes i'm gonna search it okay and, yeah but that is also i think that would work for alcohol because we have to blow sometimes oh, right yeah yeah that is great how do you wait a minute i have a question how do you blow your alcohol inks i with a respirator on you no airbrush? i don't use my mouth i use okay. i have a motorized um air blower oh, that people okay. use for airbrush yeah and I have a tin holds puffer. Oh yes, a little yeah. squeezy thing. A squeezy yeah. thing, okay. yeah. But I do prefer my motorized um, air blower. Okay. Yeah, but this one is awesome. Yeah, yeah, I really like it. Wow, I never heard about <laughs> this. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, different. And yeah. are they sold for art or? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, specifically for blowing paint around. Wow. That is amazing, the things that we have today. I know, and it's it's sold on, I just looked it up real quick, it's sold on the pourscraperepeat.com. Okay. Yeah, okay, and it's not expensive, it's notes. like $15. $15 oh my gosh, like not at all. It's the same price of the Chin Holtz Puffer and it's way smaller than this. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so for me, let me see. I have so many things here. Oh, so. Yeah. We all talk about, you know, for people that use paint, everybody always asks, how do you clean your brushes? Um, what I found out is that just water sometimes is not enough. And because I want something that is non-toxic, especially for oil paint, many people use Gamzol to clean their oil paint brushes. They use as a cleaner or they use as a medium for, you know, uh, make the paint thinner. Um, I don't use Gensol because Gensol, despite people saying there is no smell, yeah, it, that doesn't mean that it's still not having fumes, right? Just because something doesn't smell doesn't mean it's still dangerous. So Gensol is not safe. If you're using Gensol, mm -hmm. despite not having smells, you should wear a mask because it releases fumes. So what I use to clean my brushes for oil paint, and you can use this with acrylics as well, um, is this natural lavender brush cleaner from this company called Chelsea Classical Studio. They sell 
uh, let me see, many thanks for oil paint and, uh, you know, all the medias in Namor, uh, safe, you know, safe products. So if you see here, there's no carcinogenic fumes, there's no petroleum, and important, there is no turpentine. Turpentine is, you know, many people give up on oil Terrible. paints because... <laughs> Yes. They get allergies, headaches, and so you don't have to do this, right? There is things nowadays that are safe. As you see, Does it smell like lavender? Yes. Oh, how nice. It smells like essential oils. With time, you brush and then you, you put in the paper and it kind of goes away. And the oil paint always releases to the, um, to the end of the thing. And, to, and just a tip that for me to... Uh, hydrate my brushes after I clean with this solution. I use baby oil for acrylic and for oils. I just started a paint in oils, so I'm while we are talking, I'm just resting my brushes here on baby oil. And um, after you clean them well, you can brush them on baby oil, and so they become soft and hydrated again. So you know, we spend a lot of money on good brushes, especially for oils. And because usually people that paint acrylics, they beat their brushes up because they are doing sometimes abstract and things like that. And um, so baby oil is a great solution. And I use that a lot. I wouldn't have thought of that, but that's yeah. very And smart. it smells good, right? Do, yeah. you use, do you use brushes in your technique or no? Mm, not often. Not sometimes often. I do. Mm -hmm. uh -oh. So it's good you don't spend that much money on your brush. No, no, and you know I used to oil do oil paints and watercolors years and years ago, and I just held on to the brushes. But part of the oil issue was that smell; it was just yeah. just too much. So. Yeah, and the problem with oil paint that people um, that don't know the things we have today is they say, "Well, oil paint smells." Well, the oil itself paint doesn't smell. What people have the smells is the mediums that they used in the past and some people still use in turpentine yeah and some people say i bad. like the smell of turpentine oh well oh your body doesn't <laughs> it's not good for you so no. um it's there's so many cases of allergies because turpentine and yeah. um so and people have yeah. unfortunately to give up on oils because of that. So let's not do that. So no, again, um, brush cleaner. I yeah. Love so I'll put, and they sell on Amazon as well. And I buy usually on Jerry Arorama, but they sell mm. Amazon. It seems that on Amazon is a little bit more expensive, but um, it lasts a long time. Like I have this here, it's ending, but I think I have this for a year now. Oh, uh, that's yeah. So again, it's from the Chelsea Classical Studios Lavender Brush Cleaner. So it's mm -hmm. their product are awesome. Awesome. I just use their stuff because there's nothing bad on it. Very nice. All right. Okay, my turn. Yes. Okay. This one is going to be kind of the opposite of what you just showed because it stinks. <laughs> Okay, this is Moon. I hope you're using a mask. Uh, I'll explain why I don't in a second. Minwax pre-stained wood conditioner. Mm -hmm. Now, what I use this for is I mix it with my Floetrol when I want cells in my paintings. Because usually, like, I do the bloom technique as well, and you do want a lot of cells in that. Right, let me show again that piece. Right, this cells is this That's little. That's not the right? bloom pour though, but that is cells. Yeah, yeah, this cells is this little round things that you yeah. see there, and that can make a painting really interesting. But usually with the bloom pour, they recommend Australian Floetrol. Hmm. You can get that here, but you're gonna pay huge, huge amounts of money for this little tiny bottle, hmm. like seventy dollars for you know tiny little bottle. Oh, wow. So what I do is I take my American Floetrol, which is very inexpensive, and I take just a dropper and I put just a couple of drops in each of my paints. Hmm. So it's very stinky, but I just pull it out, put the cover back on, mix it in. You don't smell it anymore. Of course, I always I have my air purifier, but. Um, it makes a huge difference. It almost makes it like Australian Floetrol. Wow. And uh, by the way, I do have also a small, uh, because, you know, my studio is not that big. I have a small air purifier as well that is on all the time. But when I'm doing alcohol ink or stuff, I put on the higher 
um, you know, higher level. Yeah. 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 So yeah. that's my, my and I life. guess by the size of this thing, it lasts forever. It does. It does. Unless you do what I did with the previous container of it, which is to leave it up in my studio, which is not oh. always air conditioned <gasps> and it separates Ooh. and it completely so ruins it. So it doesn't it. like heat. Doesn't like heat. And mm. it also, if you put it in paint and like mix it in and you go to use that paint again and it's gotten hot, it'll ruin that paint too. So if, if you live in a climate like here, maybe Florida, Arizona, it's not good to put that on the garage. You have to no. put it inside your home. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe under the sink, you know, that usually is very cool under the sink, you know? Yes. Um, yeah. Yeah. I, um, here in Florida is different. When I was in Washington, I had uh, some sealers canvas sealers on the garage and my mm -hmm. spray paint and stuff. Um, but here I put my sealers inside the house yeah. on the little Can closet on the entrance because it's too hot. I'm afraid, you know, they are flammable. Um, yeah. So sometimes <laughs> it gets too bad. hot in the garage. Yeah. Uh, and in uh, Washington, it was the opposite. My garage is always cold. <laughs> So yep. I could put a lot of this stuff on my garage there. And here's a little different. So you have, don't forget about this, that it's, you know, it depends on your climate, where you storage this kind of things. Um, you don't want your things to separate and have to buy new ones because that is awful. Yes. <laughs> okay. So, um, so I forgot something, just backtracking a little bit. Well, I use this one here for acrylic paint cleaning, for cleaning the brushes, which is the Pink Soap by Speedball. And yes. um, I mix with water. I don't put it, it's very thick. So I mix a little bit of water and I have on a container that they have a spiral, you know, coil on the oh. on the end of the the you can buy on hobby lobby and amazon as well i'm gonna put the link as well of the coil thing that i'm talking about and um so just because i forgot to show this when i was talking about the one for cleaning the oil uh, brushes and i do the same thing i wash them with the solution right and then later i scrub them on baby oil and then remove the baby oil with a paper towel and then they are moisturized and now you know ready to go cool. so my other fun thing here is one of my favorite products which is acrylic ah! paints liquid <laughs> acrylic paints that down. yeah um and i have here two of my favorite colors um with this there is two brands right liquid tax and Della Roni. This mm -hmm. is Della Roni is uh, maybe two dollars more expensive than the Liquitex, but you can see it comes a lot. I yeah. don't know ounce wise if they're the same, but and this is my favorite color here from the Della Roni is indigo. Um. So indigo is a color as you see is well loved. Mm -hmm. And from the Liquitex is the gold. That's pretty nice, yeah gold there iridescent so, bright gold yeah mm -hmm. iridescent bright gold and let me show you here an example what <laughs> i like to do is the sometimes i mix when i'm doing alcohol ink stuff i mix acrylic and alcohol ink so sometimes i dilute this with alcohol destillated Ooh. alcohol and sometimes i just use a flow medium acrylic flow medium so i brought here an example which is a piece that I'm still working on, but I just did the first wash. So mm -hmm. this top, this top here is a Delaroni, but in this piece here, I actually forgot and I used alcohol, not alcohol. I used the flow medium uh -huh. and uh, you see here some of the gold, it is gold there. Yeah. And the difference that it does, and if you are just listening to this, I just showed the canvas, uh, so you just pop up later, or I'll put a picture on you on the blog post. The reason why I like to use alcohol sometimes is because it breaks up the acrylic. 
So when you pour on your canvas or you use with a brush, it creates a uh, granulation, the same granulation that people are used to see on um, watercolor paint, you know, mm -hmm. how some colors, uh, they granulate. Yeah. Uh, like moon glow, which I could bathe myself in because <laughs> that color granulates so much. It's so beautiful. Oh. And so it creates that kind of effect. But as you saw in that piece, when you just use flow medium, it's just to give more running, but it's not going to really granulate because as you can see here, I could make it softer, mm -hmm. right? But I could not granulate because I just used flow medium, which is not made to granulate. It's just made to make it be slow. Yeah. yeah. So, um, and this piece, it has some alcohol ink. No, not everything is acrylic there. So again, it's the Della Roni indigo color. I don't even know how many colors they have. I have a bunch, but yeah. they have a lot. I bought yeah. a couple on your recommendation. I, I can't remember if I get the indigo or the Prussian blue, but I love oh, it. Oh, the Prussian blue is awesome. So, and the other one is the Liquitex acrylic ink iridescent bright gold. All right. I mean, they, they sell on Amazon, but to tell the truth, I don't see a difference on the price. Wherever you go, mm -hmm is the same price it sells directly by them on amazon okay. so if you have prime you have to make sure if i buy on another store with the shipping is that gonna be worth it so yeah I, they are not cheap right if you think right. about that one of this is, can be about 15 dollars depending on where you buy but they last a long time you think this is small but it's not the liquid tax though to me, they run faster. Okay. To me, they end faster. See, this here is already like here. So while my Deloroni, I don't see them ending so soon. So <laughs> okay. you have to see, like you pay a little more of Deloroni, but I think you're getting more ink for the back. Uh, but they both have different colors. For example, the magenta of the liquid tax is not the same of the magenta from Deloroni. Right. Yeah. Della Roni yeah. also has um, bright colors. They have iridescent colors um, and they also have fluorescent colors. So you can mm. do this kind of combination. So oh, wow. you can have fun with this. Just choose. I think to, like you choose a couple of your favorites. If you're not familiar with this medium to play with it and see if you like if it something that you would like i love also to do drips with it it's so easy to do drips with it mm -hmm. so if you like drips mm -hmm. on your pieces um it's uh and it they go great with alcohol ink so if you use alcohol ink they just work marvelous with it wonderful yeah okay your turn okay my turn this might be something that everybody already knows about but i'm going to share it anyway it is these little condiment cups so there, you know, this is the one you, you might get your tartar sauce in if you get fish and chips, mm -hmm. <laughs> but I, I get them off Amazon as well. And, and it's called um, condiment, condiment cups. Uh, yeah. Cups. Okay. Yeah. You can also get the baby food ones where the lid is attached. I like those too, but for mm -hmm. some reason I keep coming back to these little guys. Mm -hmm. It's just a couple of ounces capacity and I mix my colors in these mm. so i'll put in my paint my medium and whatever else i want in here and then um it seals up really well so i can come back a week or even two weeks later sometimes mm. and maybe maybe need to add a little bit more water um, or medium to loosen it up a little bit but mm -hmm. it keeps and it'll work i really like that the yeah yeah and i'm so excited i did a painting okay so i want to show you this one um i did this last weekend and uh oh. Beautiful. I was really excited about it, <laughs> especially because I had several weeks of nothing working right. Um, so I have all these paints in those little cups so mm -hmm. I can do another one and see what else I can come up with. Oh, wow. Yeah. So you can create kind of a palette with these yeah. cups. You can do like a little family of similar yeah, paintings. Yeah, that's a great idea. Yeah. That's a great now, idea. The, the thing I struggle with, though, is that um 
like I could wash them out every time, but I don't. Uh, so oh, what no. ends up happening like if I just put paint on top of this though and the medium it will start to break down yeah. the paint that's already in here and that will start to flake no. off and get in your paint so what I need to do is just like peel it off which could be kind oh. of fun <laughs> another one that I bought by mistake trying I'm you see I'm trying things from my medium is this because it has oh, a lid so tiny. Uh -huh. but it's so tiny yeah. I didn't think was that tiny when it yeah. arrived. Yeah, they have ones that, that are tiny. like that, but like two or three times that size. They're about the same size as this, but they have the attached cover. Which so I, I was like, like wow, well, great. I now have a hundred of these little oh, tiny no. cups <laughs> 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 that barely fits my brush. Oops. Yeah. So I just use when I, for mediums for my signature, or something really like fine detail yeah. for the oil, so but it's just ridiculous. Years. I'm like, this is not working. Yeah. Another mm. thing that I used before, but I didn't bring, I actually, I want to buy also again. I buy this little saw ceramic things on Target that is like a dollar. It's literally a dollar on the, you know, on the dining section, they have white ceramic, oh. all kinds of pots yes. and things. And they have these little saucers. You yeah. know, for soy sauce or things like that. Yeah. And I used that before also for mediums and I like it. And yeah, you just smart. put a paper towel and uh, use it again. But the bad side of it, you have to put the right quantity because it's not like yours. Yours I like because I can close. If I don't use all the medium, I can close with that when I had to control all the time because I don't want to waste medium. Mm. Yeah. Um, I hate to throw things away. Yeah. Which and... means I have like 40 of these full of paint upstairs. <laughs> no, but <laughs> I think it's a great idea. Away. Great idea. Yeah. Okay. I know I'm very oil, oil painty today, but That's... let me, okay. no, let me do something next? else. I'm not joking. Oh, let okay. me do this and then I do all the oil thing. Um, so this is a company. It's a, it's a small business company. And uh, it call, it's called Lindy's Gang. And they sell what? pigments. <laughs> but uh, they are pigments um, that you can work with oh, watercolor. Yeah. They, you know, they are water soluble. Yeah. But they can work with all kinds of things. I actually uh, mix them with linseed oil and create an oil paint. So oh, they are pigments, okay. but mm -hmm. they are, I think what they show on their uh, Instagram is mostly for card makers and scrapbookers um, and people that do a watercolor, but I use them with everything. They have a shiny, very pigmented color. Mm -hmm. They have many kinds of products. They have these, what they call Linges Magicals. And they also oh. have this here that are not spray. They just, you just release. I love this yeah. to make drips when I'm doing watercolor. And I use this a lot of my watercolor. But when I'm like on this piece that I showed before, I use some drips mm -hmm. of this. These ones are, this one is called Starbutt Squirts. So these are squirts. squirts. But, but what is it? It's pigment with water. They come okay. just with, look at the shine there. They are very oh, shiny, They're very nice. shiny, very, very, nice. very shiny. And they are pigment and they work with water. So they actually, when you buy the squirts, they come just with the pigment and you put warm water at home oh. and then you shake it. So <laughs> these ones here, let me see if I can open. A strong color so you can see better. Magical. Work. This is from the Magical. So they yeah. are. Ooh, pretty. Yeah, this pigment there. Come on. Martian magenta. Oh, there you go. Is that one also iridescent? Yes, they all yeah. have a shine. Mm, I love that. Um, I like to add them to my regular paints to but just add a little sparkle. My favorite in their line is this one. Oh, how I love this. Is this it? is the Magical Shakers. <laughs> and okay. the reason why they're so good, because they are magical. 
they're actually magical. Okay. It is because you see this color. Fic- Jenna, what are you talking about? This is red. No. Yeah, it's not red. When you put, it has many kinds of speckles of other colors. Okay. So then when you spray with water, you see all this kind of other colors as well. And they mix. But the mix end up being to the red family. It's, it, oh. I, it, you can't explain. It's just no, so amazing. So amazing. I don't know if I can. Probably not. I cannot open the top. But I don't know if you can see. But they come, they come with like this dropper here that is bigger. And then okay. you have... The other like one, which shaker. I like that it's, yes, it's oh, more funny. controllable there. Yeah. So you control them. Wow, cool. Yeah, but they are fantastic. I have a bunch of them. Uh, they are wonderful if you do watercolors. They are wonderful if you do acrylics. Uh, they give that different sparkle, but that different tone color that people probably are like, what is this color? What is this color? And... And you can play like me, you know, mix with other things, mix with a medium, mix with, mm-hmm. you know, what will, it's great. Mix them with gloss medium, which is thick yeah. and create your own color. Oh, cool. Look oh, that's at that. pretty. Yeah, a little that's, pale green. Yeah. And what I love is that in the case of this magical, uh, the magical little pots here is that if you buy like this in a collection, then all mm-hmm. these colors go together. So you don't make a mistake. You know, everything goes together, all the colors. Mm-hmm. So you are good to go. They <laughs> have nice. sprays as well. Um, oh. But I have a tendency to like more the squirts and the powder uh, instead of the sprays. Yeah, I get my spring pigments which I, I like they come in a plastic little baggie though so i tend to accidentally dump too much in i just need to get a little scooper thingy mm-hmm. uh, but they do add some richness and sparkle to regular colors that i like mm-hmm. do you have something else oh i have one more thing um this is kind of cheating but i can almost never do a painting without this paint it's deco art extreme sheen 24 karat gold and it's under three dollars for this two ounce bottle and i i won't be without it (laughs) and sometimes it's hard to buy like it'll be out at michael's um so when i find it i buy several but the reason i love this and it's i can show you it's um i love deco art they they have very good quality they really do and they're so affordable i'm going to show you the consistency is different and it's almost Mm. a little oily oh so yeah it's thick it's very thick and it is but at the same time you can pour so interesting you can pour it yeah so what i like about it it's very rich that shows Um, the quality because we can really see the gold when you when you did that yeah it's it's very rich that's the gold that's in in this Ooh, guy yes which is very very sparkly so she's showing um, the gold on the piece that she she did yeah but it it's uh it also is really good if you want cells like there's some kind of oil oh. in it that it doesn't i mean i don't know really what so it, but... do you find out that some acrylic paints give you more cells than other i didn't know that oh yeah oh yeah hmm. this one is the best for oh, cells wow. if that's what you want yeah um, you know as if you want to start playing and you have to buy craft paints, I think they are the best brand. I yeah. think their quality is amazing. And uh, actually, if you follow them on Instagram, they have so many cool ideas. Not oh. my style, but they have very cool ideas. Yeah. And they show a lot of people doing amazing art with them. Amazing yeah, art. I, I bet. Because so, uh, I have the Amsterdam gold as well, but I still like this one better. Another brand of this uh, cheaper lines that I like to use to be the um, Martha Stewart watercolor acrylic paints, which is a weird name. Really? Yeah. Okay. I think it's because it was based on watercolor colors, like softer. Mm-hmm. But it was such a weird consistency. When you squirt the bottle it was i'm almost like a jelly oh interesting yeah so 
and mm-hmm. but I really love the soft colors and the paint was soft it was not uh it was not like thick like uh, like yours but I think unfortunately I don't know every time I go at Michael's I've never saw that line anymore so I think they discontinue mm-hmm. which happens unfortunately uh with these brands mm-hmm. um I think maybe people got confused because it's so different texture but I loved the colors Mm-hmm. But I don't think Martha Stewart quality of paints are good. I think deco art is way I never knew ahead. There were any. Way ahead. <laughs> I yeah. mean, she has beautiful colors. I think the colors, like they have pastels and all that. But I think in terms of quality, if you're going to buy this kind of paints, deco art is the way to go. Because, um, and they're getting there in terms of modern colors, I think. So, uh, and that was your last thing? Yep, that was my last okay. thing. And I have two things because I can't control myself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you told me four and that was it. <laughs> yeah, but then okay, when I was like, go. I can't just, you know, put this here. It's, you know, it's so little, you know. Hmm? Um, I don't have words. It's, it's called, uh, it's this company called R&F. They make... Uh, pigment sticks, oil pigment sticks, and they also do um, paints uh, if you paint with acoustic uh, paint. So they produce these two lines. One is Mm -hmm. oil pigment sticks and encaustic uh, paints. But can you tell me what encaustic paints are? (laughs) What is that? uh, They are paints that you, they work on heat. And you use of bee wax. Oh, so okay. they just work if you heat them constantly. So they have to be on a griddle, uh-huh. you know, all the time. And yeah. Okay. Thank you. I didn't know what it was. Yeah, okay. So this. So this, they have a line of pigment sticks. Come on. Yeah, yeah, iridescent this, copper. Yeah, this one is irid- iridescent color. I didn't bring my bag of the other because it's a mess. <laughs> <laughs> I understand. <laughs> but these are so buttery. Just what do you so... do with it? These are oil paints. So sometimes you want some, you want to draw with oil paint, like, you know, like this. I want some sparkle in the paint in just in some things i go there i use like a like a crayon but it's it's oil paint on a stick oh wow it's so, so you're not using a brush you're just no. like pushing no, it out here. and just drawing with it yeah oh and wow it's like lipstick. you just go yeah so you just go there and you brush when you want some last minute or you wanna when you wanna really you know mix the paint on the canvas <laughs> then you just <laughs> And I bought this recently, I didn't even use yet, is, you know, copper gold. Yeah, I love copper. Um, They are not that cheap, I have to say, but they are oil paints, handmade, hand poured, and they last a long time. You don't waste, I mean, except if you decide to do the whole canvas with it. But (laughs) um, for me, I know artists that use this a lot, painting with them. Uh, Not the whole painting, but like, actually penny i do just for little things little you know accents or, yeah accents yeah. but it's such a good quality it is a small business um yeah, and this good. you know is made in the usa <laughs> and it's again it lasts forever yeah <laughs> and just as a last thing if you want to start with uh oil paint and everybody says expensive and yes good quality oil paint is expensive you should not start oil paint unfortunately oil paint you cannot start with cheap brands if you buy oil paint in michael's that's not gonna do for you Mm. unfortunately oils you have to start with good quality paints um because it's gonna flow better you're not gonna get frustrated and you're gonna learn if you work with a low quality paint you're gonna learn things that later is gonna be hard because the way good paints flow is different Mm -hmm. so 
this company, I was crazy to try them, but also um, the price that they have on this set is so affordable. So this is Williamsburg Handmade Oils. Okay. And if you don't know Williamsburg, they are from Golden. So Golden started this new brand of oils that are, mm -hmm. oh, there they go. They are <laughs> on the floor. So they are, they are using the finest pigments um, to do this. And I mean, oil paints are yummy, but handmade ones are just another level. But as you understand, because they're handmade, they're gonna be more expensive. But um, Williamsburg did this set and is on Amazon. I bought it for thirty-five dollars. Wow! I That's think now it's forty-five. Point. But listen, even for forty-five, this is a steal. Do you see the size? They gave you a full size mm -hmm. titanium white. Yeah. And for the handmade oil, this is a steal. This is I still. Yeah, it is. And they are well known now for unique colors. Um, and they have, uh, like, for example, this one here is Persian Rose. So very, very different. Mm. And this one I used before. So, so good. It's the Brilliant Yellow Pale. Look how... Mm pale that is and yeah, how is pretty. that good well because you can use this to mix and give another tint instead of using white uh, that makes sense but sometimes white creates the same tint so i thought i would sneak that in there just because <laughs> just because, because you, you know could. yeah but also i felt <laughs> you know it's affordable for you to get it started with good quality don't go don't go to michael's and buy oils there it's it's not gonna cut it it's not gonna yeah. cut it you're gonna be very frustrated um uh my oils they are a big investment but it's it's, it's just different so um you cannot beat this price i mean come on 40 bucks for the handmade um and i don't know if people know but recently um golden uh became a employee uh own company Oh. So huh. not just all their lines of products are made in the USA, but they are now owned by the employees. So um, mm. they are really good. Like mm -hmm. if you email them, they answer questions. They have a very good YouTube channel. They are always mm. want to help people to understand their products. Um, and I got really excited when they launched um, this line. I use the watercolor line, which is Core. I love Core. It's just amazing, the pigmentation. Of course, we all love Daniel Smith. If you do watercolors, you know what I'm talking about, but the Core line is just exquisite. So it's good to help companies like this, right? Yeah, like uh, Lindy's Gang, small business by a woman um, that sells these things. We, we, there is a big push now for small business, and I think it's right because there's so much going on with these big companies over there trying to suck everything. Mm -hmm. So I think we um, have to try to help businesses. And especially I like to personally, if there is women on, I prefer. Yeah. Um, because I know as a person and you now started a shop, it's hard. It's hard. It's hard stuff. There's a lot of costs involved uh, to have a business, to have a website, right? To have all these materials. Mm -hmm. It's, um, you know, I just made a... Uh, article on my blog uh, saying why paints cost so much because sometimes people don't understand and I understand that if you don't paint you don't understand all the things you have to buy to create paint but right. I want to use the best quality oils because I want when a person buys a oil piece from me I want that piece to last for the children for the grandchildren for mm -hmm. forever Mm -hmm. Right? I don't want them to crack in 10 years. Because it can happen. Yeah. So, um, I know we could be here showing like 300 products. 
Yes. Yeah. I had more, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. But we're going to do another one because I think it's so fun to share products because people have different things. Like I was, my jaw dropped when you show that, you the know, the blower. Oh my gosh. <laughs> it blew me away. It's just like, oh, I never, it's so and cool. it's so good. Um, you see, we always find that when we are different artists and do different things, we all keep um, finding those things and um, we all have different things like to do. And I think we learn from each other. I learned from you today about this product. Because <laughs> I was like, oh my gosh. Um, so it was fun. I hope, Alyssa, you can come back and we can talk about other products. Sure, and I, I think we should do one one day and people can leave a comment what they think about surfaces. Because people have a lot of questions about surfaces, how to prepare the surface, you know, and all mm -hmm. kinds of services that you can do uh, paint with. So uh, that is good. So again, I want to show here and your store is Deep Blue Fluid Art. Do you have a newsletter on your store? So like um, if they want to know when new things are coming out or not yet? No, not yet. No, I, I mostly really did it so I could explore social selling using Shopify. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, I'm kind of focusing on that right now. And your Instagram is Alisa Meredith. Also. It's Alisa M Meredith on M. Instagram Meredith. and okay. Pinterest and Twitter. Yeah, yeah, sorry, I forgot to put the graphics there for that. Mm -hmm. um, oh. But you can also see a lot of reels that she's doing, um, doing her art. And what is your Pinterest? It's, it's Alisa M. Meredith also over okay. there. But yeah. if people go to your website here that I'm showing, alisameredith.com, mm -hmm. they can find all these links, right? Yeah, and I, I have a new Pinterest account for Deep Blue Fluid Art too, where I'm putting all the new oh, um, idea great. pins. I'm going to make sure I follow show. that. Okay. Yeah, I and... try to show the, the process and all the materials and kind of walk people through if they want to try it. Yes, and you have a YouTube page that <laughs> you do... Um, weekly talks not just about pinterest but you've been doing a lot about business i love the one that i was watching yesterday while you're doing some housework mm -hmm. about how to have a remarkable business well how oh, to be yeah. remarkable you yeah, was amazing that, that talk i like oh, it so like, amazing talk sure. so i would encourage everybody oh, to check her youtube and uh, check that out so you know, the great thing about YouTube is that keeps there. You can watch it. But his talk was amazing. I like his Yeah, talk. that was Rich Brooks, if you want to look him up. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, I'll put a link that we were talking about. I'll put the video link. Um, so maybe by the point this goes live, because, you know, I'm sorry. I'm not very good at doing things fast because I have a bunch of things going on with my son also. So I'm mm -hmm. not a very fast editor. <laughs> But by the time this come off, maybe you're gonna have a newsletter. I don't know. Maybe I don't know. <laughs> I don't. I don't know. Yeah, but follow her on that. all her links, yeah. and you can be in contact with her. I think also Instagram is a great way to be in contact with her. Anything else you have yes. questions, you can DM her about the pieces yeah. as well that you see in the store. So yep. I mean, or if the you book... need help with marketing, I that's what I. That's ah yes, and you this. also <laughs> you also provide um, you also provide services right for people to help with marketing. Mm -hmm. Tell us a yep. little bit about that before we go. So I can help with your content. I can help with content strategy creation as well as social strategy. Um, I also really enjoy doing Pinterest advertising mm -hmm. and Pinterest strategy. So Pinterest audits and strategies. So if people want to start with that and check how they get it started a plan yep. or how to do the ads they can contact you when you can help they them. can i'm also about to put on a workshop for pinterest ads because people have been bugging me to do that so i'm like fine i'll do yes. it <laughs> yes fun. i think it's a great idea because you rock at these things i've been following you a long time you know that Thank and you just rock at these things i said before today there's many things going on but we cannot depend on just one thing, right? Mm -hmm. And we have to use all kinds of things to put our name out there. So don't be dependent just on Instagram or, you know. And it's important also to have someone helping you with your content. So if you are listening to this, watching this, and you don't know how to get it started. And what I love about this, Alisa, is that now you're creating art and have you can now help artists as well. 
because you have so much competence about all this marketing stuff and now being on the side of artists also you kind of understand what kind of things we're looking for kind of do <laughs> yeah so it's really amazing and really amazing Aww. so guys check her out if you have more questions about her service just dm her on instagram she's very yes. approachable and um and follow all her content and again if you want to start with marketing and pinterest just check her youtube because she has been doing some great interviews and um it's been some amazing guests that you you know a lot of good people <laughs> <laughs> I do. I'm very fortunate. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I'm you like, wow. Yeah. Glad we know each other. Alisa, it was a pleasure. Thank Likewise. you so much. Thank you so much Have again. Thinking. Yes. <laughs> Bye, everyone. Thanks for listening. Check episode notes at the number two, worldart.com slash blog. Connect with Jana on Instagram at Jana underscore two worlds. And make sure to receive our artful insights by signing up at bit.ly slash join two worlds art.